are again. This is Mike Lodge. I am the business advisor. Trying to get my name right this morning because I got it wrong yesterday. (laughs) I tell you something. Yesterday was kind of a, a, a long, tough day. I was dealing with so many different subject matters and issues for clients that I really had to focus. At the end of the day, when I have worked so diligently and and focused on issues, I can sit down anywhere in the house and I can fall asleep. (laughs) The mind is gone. And I'm an old man. But remember, mind is, I mean, old age is just in the mind, right? Well, that's what mine is. (laughs) For months now, I have been talking about and telling you guys that we are in a recession. We went out of inflation quite some months ago, and we flew into a recession. Now, the economists and the banks and everybody else in business don't want to tell you we're in a recession because they don't want you to run to your banks and start withdrawing cash, which some of us may have to do at some point in time. But we are in a recession. And I, I pick up a Fortune magazine article this morning. The title of it, The Housing Market Enters Into Recession. Here's what to expect. Next. I'm glad to see that business magazines are beginning to say we are in a recession. I'm glad to hear Americans acknowledge that we are in a recession. I'm glad to know that Americans are saying, okay, we know we're in a recession, so now we have to streamline our budgets. We have to live better because the government is really fouling things up for us. So let's read just a little bit of this this article called The Housing Market Enters Into Recession. Here's what to expect next. The first statement says, and this is written by Lance Lambert, by the way, of uh, Fortune magazine. The housing market enters into recession. We are giving back some of the euphoria home pricing that was rolling over every housing market. And he was true. We had this euphoria. Prices were going up. People were making money, but they were too high. They were inflated too high. They were out of control. The housing cycle, which began an upward climb in 2011, has officially turned over. Simply put, we've moved into a housing recession. On Tuesday, we learned that home builders broke ground on 982 single-family homes in June. That's down 19% 19 since February and down 16% from the same month in 2021, a year ago. While it's hardly a blowout, it's clear builders are cutting back. Historically speaking, that's exactly what happens when a housing cycle turns over, an existing home inventory which builders compete against begins to spike. Home builders start to cut back. And that's exactly true. At the moment, home prices have, in certain markets, started to drift downward. There's more inventory on the market, and that inventory is staying longer on the market. So if there's inventory out there now, building... That means that that, their competition are the builders, and the builders feel that the real estate market is their competition. So they start to cut down. Peak euphoria is behind us. We are giving back some of the euphoria pricing that was rolling over every housing market, says Rick Palsarius, uh, Jr., head of research at John Barnes Real Estate Consulting. Existing home inventory will continue to rise and home building will continue to slow. At least that's the view of John Burns Real Estate Consulting, which does consulting work for both builders and investors. As it does, the ongoing housing recession, i.e. a contracting housing market, could push home prices lower in bubbly regional housing markets. Indeed, many bubbly markets, uh, Palacio says, are barreling towards price cuts in both 2023 and 2024. That includes markets like Phoenix, Nashville, West Palm Beach. I just moved from West Palm Beach 
and the prices were so going up, they were out of control. Even on the rental properties, going from eighteen hundred to thirty four hundred dollars a month, way out of out of line. And, uh, so West Palm Beach, Las Vegas, and Austin, in Boise, Palisarius says home prices could go negative on a year over year basis as soon as December. Builders are already deciding to not put up poor slabs in certain markets, which is the technical trigger for a start for a home. In certain markets, it will feel like a housing bust, Palisarius said. So I'm putting the link of that article below so that you can review it. It's a good article, and it goes through all the numbers. I know that uh, Dave Ramsey's out there saying that, oh, no, this is the best time to buy. Well, I'm saying I don't agree with him, and I think that what you have to do is pause, look at what the market is doing, look to see how low the numbers are going to go, and then buy. Buy at a time where you think you can afford it. Now, if you're trying to sell a home, you better put, if you want to buy later down, you better put, I, I guess you'd put your house on the market. But I, I don't know. I think that at the moment, the real estate market is a tricky situation. And I would say pause. I like the word pause. But I say, let's pause, do your considerations, don't talk to a real estate salesperson. Talk to someone who does the analysis work on what's happening out there in the market. But the link to this article is below. Now, I wanted to also uh, go over one other article that I found, which is also in the link. And it's talking about the markets where people are trying to get out of. They're trying to flee as fast as possible. And you'll probably find some good bargains um, pretty soon in these markets. But... There's an article out of Money Magazine and it says home buyers are fleeing these 10 cities. Here's where they want to move now. Then there's 10 cities that uh, people are wanting to move out of because it's so expensive and crime is out of control in these cities. San Francisco, California, Los Angeles, California, New York, New York, Washington, D.C., Seattle, Washington, Boston, Massachusetts. Detroit, Michigan, Denver, Colorado, Chicago, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota. San Francisco saw the largest gap between people looking to leave and those looking to move in during the second quarter of 2022. Now there is a study, you know, Redfin, the real estate online uh, source, is doing a lot of studies in this real estate market. And so... They said that among Redfin's sample of 2 million users, more than 45,000 more people looked to leave the city than move in. High home prices probably factored into that trend. The typical home in San Francisco or San Jose now costs more than $1.5 million. Redfin Deputy Chief Economist Taylor Marr said in a news release, Add in today's 5% plus mortgage rates and you are you have a high, a sky high monthly payment. So now where are they moving to? Let's scroll down and see where they're moving to. Let's see where they're moving to. So where are the people m moving to find affordable housing? So the Gene Report from Freddie Mac backs up the idea that people are seeking more affordable spots to buy homes. The company found that between March 2020 and February 2022, the most popular cities for out-of-town home buyers were concentrated in affordable interior markets in southern beach destinations like Dallas, Phoenix, and Tampa. Which is true, I've seen a lot of people move there. For many people, purchasing a home in those Sunbelt cities means saving some serious cash. Compared to buying in their current cities, the median home price on loan applications in the places gaining the most out-of-state owners was $128,000 lower than the median price of those buyer cities or regions, uh, according to Freddie Mac. 
So <clears throat> you have people looking to move out of these cities, and a lot of these cities that were mentioned are cities that are plagued with crime. They're plagued with crime. If you look at the district attorneys in those cities, they are not prosecuting people. There are stores being vandalized every single day, goods being taken out. Even Starbucks decided to close, what was it, like 16 or 18 stores, moving out of cities where it's so high infested with crime. And they pointed the finger at those cities that they were not doing their job on crime. So... Let's let's recap everything that we've just talked about. We talked about that we are in a real estate recession at the moment. Remember, real estate drives a recession. It normally does. And it's been doing that for several months now. It's just that people have not wanted to talk about it. I've talked about it, and I keep nagging you guys about it. And I'm sure you're tired of me nagging about it. But I'm going to be very truthful with you and say that we have been in this recession. And it's affecting the job market. The job markets are now starting to cut back. Companies are putting hiring freezes on their on their jobs. They're not replacing people. They're laying people off. So the job market is in limbo at the moment. There's, they say, oh, there's lots of jobs out there, but companies are not hiring for them. They're on freezes. This happened back when Obama was president also. I was a member of two chambers of commerce. I've said this before too, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. I was a, a member of two chambers of commerce, one in Orlando, Florida, and another one in Los Angeles because I had offices in both places and I was going back and forth. And I would sit in on some of these chamber meetings and the word pause, they would always say the company is, the businesses here are on pause. We're not adding jobs. We're not buying capital. We are on pause, wanting to know what the administration was going to do next. They didn't know what Obamacare was going to do. They didn't know what a lot of this stuff on hiring uh, hourly rates that the president was trying to push. They didn't know, so they put everything on pause. Well, we're in the same situation now. We don't know what Biden's going to do next. So we are on pause. Tomorrow, or maybe even this afternoon, I'm going to go over the Build Back Better bill that Biden wants to push. If you want to know a really lousy bill, that is it, because it's going to drive up inflation even worse. Remember, it's just not gasoline prices that drives up inflation. It's a whole bunch of different things of overspending of the federal government and state governments also. And that's what he wants to do, overspend and tax. And that is something that will make the economy even weaker. Don't listen to the Democrats. Don't listen to the Republicans because they're both idiots at the moment. Our politicians in Washington, D.C. are not doing their job to help the American people. And that is a fact. It's only up to you and I to manage our own lives and our own finances and to fight back where we can. That's the only thing that we can do. We are in a recession. We have to live like we're in a recession. The real estate market is in a recession. And we have to call it like it is. And we have to live in it like we know what we're doing. And we're going to go over that in the next few weeks of how we're going to monitor our monies and our finances and our investments and everything else. We have got to get and dig deep into that because that is what's affecting our lives, right? And how we live our lives and how we live our financial lives is vital at the moment. So we're in a recession. Let's live like it. I'll talk with you soon. If you want more access to me, go to my website, www.lodge.co.com. Again, that's lodge-co.com. I'll talk with you soon, guys. God bless you. Let's get out there and fight for our lives. Bye-bye.